right, this, this came from somewhere else. I mean, as bizarre as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there, I saw it. I know what the current state of the art is and in, in physics, and it's, it can't be done. Humans have pondered the existence of aliens for the longest time. The government, however, has maintained the stance that we are alone and have tried to shape the public narrative along these lines. Thankfully, physicist Bob Lazar has refused to play along and has decided to break his long silence on what he knows about extraterrestrials. What could be behind the walls of Area 51? What is it that the government wants to keep hidden at all costs? Stay tuned as we unveil what Bob Lazar reveals about aliens, alien technology and how the government has lied to us since 1955. This time may not be the first time you would hear the words Area 51. Area 51 is a name for the not-so-secret military outpost in the Nevada desert. Area 51 has been central to many conspiracy theories over the years. Many believe that Area 51 has been holding extraterrestrial life behind its heavily guarded walls for the longest time. The presence of extraterrestrial life in Area 51 remains labeled as a conspiracy because there has never been sufficient data to back up these claims. Looking at the level of secrecy that shrouds the base and all the operations there, this is no surprise. Area 51 itself is a highly classified military base located in southern Nevada. The Lake Edwards Air Force Base is in charge of the operations at the base. Although all facts tilt towards the base being nothing more than a flight testing facility, it has remained under speculation regarding extraterrestrial life. One of the biggest reasons for this is that over the years, there have been various claims of UFO sightings around the base. The military base was dubbed Area 51 since it was labeled on the Atomic Energy Commission maps. We know that Area 51 has a long history of testing out cutting-edge aircraft for the United States military and intelligence organizations. Many stealth planes, bomber jets, and drones have been tested on this facility, and whatever is okayed by the base is certain to be the best of the best. Research concerning aeronautics, radar systems, and weapon systems is also carried out in the Enigmatic facility. The high secrecy surrounding the facility has propelled rumors and various theories, some of the most popular being that the site houses an alien spaceship and the bodies of the pilots controlling said spaceship, who died in a crash in Roswell, New Mexico. It is said that the wreckage was swept up swiftly by the government and taken to Area 51 for reverse engineering and the bodies were taken for examination. There are rumors that Area 51 is a hub of active communication and collaborations with extraterrestrial life forms. People also think these life forms have supplied the United States government with false extraterrestrial abductions or holographic projections of extreme religious events. Perhaps that is how the idea of the Illuminati and other religious and satanic cults was birthed. Area 51 is also believed to serve as a portal to other dimensions, allowing the United States government to gain access to alternate realities and parallel worlds. The United States government, however, has never come out to accept these claims as true or come forward to admit the existence of these extraterrestrial life forms or even the presence of alien technology in Area 51. The government has bluntly denied its involvement in activities involving UFO or extraterrestrial life form sightings, ticking to all claims that Area 51 remains a testing and research facility for military weapons. Even after the government laid all allegations to rest concerning Area 51 and its involvement in anything that concerns alien individuals and technology, or even anything outside of its routine testing and research activities to beef up national security and defense, Conspiracy theorists and hawk-eyed observers have not ceased to keep their eyes away from this facility. They try to glean anything remotely resembling a little green man. Now, Area S4 is the designated even more secretive location posted several kilometers south of Area 51. It is at this location Bob Lazar reveals that he worked in the late 1980s. Lazar revealed that he was employed to reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. This revelation from a perceived insider was all the public needed to hear for the I knew it's to start rolling out. His admission has renewed the public's interest concerning this topic and has raised debates amongst the general public. 
Bob Lazar revealed that he had been recruited by Edward Teller, a veteran physicist and one of the pioneers of the creation of the hydrogen bomb. He claimed he had been employed to work on a project tagged Galileo, which included the reverse engineering of extraterrestrial spaceships at a facility called S-4. S-4 is rumored to be about 15 miles south of Area 51. Bob Lazar claimed to have been privileged to inspect an alien spacecraft known as the Sport Model, which he claimed was powered by an anti-meta reactor that utilized the element 115 for fuel. He further claimed that he had read briefing documents from the United States government, where it was mentioned that extraterrestrial life had been involved in the affairs of humans for the last 10,000 years. Lazar's consistent appearance in public interviews has brought fresh public interest in what truly goes on in Area 51. Lazar has sat through several podcasts and interviews where he reveals more and more details of his employment in this S-4 facility. He claims to have witnessed several of the test flights of these alien spacecraft. He revealed that these spacecraft performed maneuvers that defied many laws governing physics. Some of these maneuvers include acts like hovering, accelerating, and disappearing. Laser first became a public figure in 1989 when he was interviewed by George Knepp, who was working at KISS Television Las Vegas at the time. Initially, Bob preferred to remain anonymous, choosing a pseudonym. He was referred to as Dennis, and he spoke exclusively in silhouette. Sometime later, he appeared, devoid of disguise, and used his government name. Without hiding behind shadows and a false name, Lazar made some heavy allegations against the United States government. He spun some wild tales about how the United States government owned nine spacecraft that were crashed or captured from another planet. He mentioned that one of these nine spacecraft was shaped like a saucer, like the ones in the movies. Bob further explains that he was part of a government-hired crew that reverse-engineered these spacecraft to provide the propulsion secrets needed by American scientists to pave the way to the stars. Bob Lazar made more claims about getting fired from the super-secret military site because he had allegedly led some of his companions into the desert near the Area 51 base one evening, where they would secretly observe a source of one of the test flights. A Lincoln County constable had caught the gang as they tried to leave the base and reported them to the authorities. Lazar had talked about some of the test flights he had observed. He described that all the nine spacecraft he had seen during that test flight were in peak working conditions and had all operated without any glitches at all. However, he noted that one of the flying disks looked like some flying object had hit it. He also observed that the spacecraft had a large hole on the top and the metal looked bent out of shape. Lazar believed that that ship had come from somewhere else that was not Earth. The inside of the ship spurred this realization. Bob had gotten a good look inside the flying disc and noticed something strange. The furniture was a dead giveaway. The craft had small chairs, chairs that couldn't fit a petite human. Lazar revealed that some of these alien spacecraft were demolished to understand how the engineering worked so that they could better adapt to human aircraft innovations. Bob further talked about another test he was privileged to witness. He mentioned that the aircraft's bottom glowed blue and started to hiss, as high voltage would on a round sphere. Lazar believed the aircraft was shaped like so, without any sharp edges, to contain the high voltage properly. He mentioned that the test was short. All that happened was that the aircraft was lifted off the ground till it reached about 20 to 30 feet into the air. After a few moves, it landed. Although it was a short test flight, Lazar stated that he was still astonished as the aircraft was lifted off the ground without any visible propellers, jet engine, or without producing exhaust gas to show that any fuel was utilized. For all purposes and intent, it could as well have been magic that levitated the aircraft. According to Lazar, these spacecraft were not used for any flying expeditions to Jupiter. He maintained that the excessive caution and intense secrecy surrounding these explorations were a great source of dissatisfaction for him, because he could not understand why they would not share these projects with the whole of the scientific community. He found it outright unfair, because he felt the community was more capable of dealing with certain information. They probably would have gotten much further with the experiments if the whole project were not shrouded in secrecy. 
Lazar further complained about the lack of wisdom in keeping the projects a secret, because the desert facility needed more facilities to properly analyze what they would be dealing with. One of Lazar's closest friends, Gene Huff, had described the pressure Bob was facing from the military. He mentioned that random security checks had been dropped by his house often, and they had gone as far as threatening his wife's life. Huff himself is not a scientist of any kind, but is merely a real estate appraiser. He had only become aware of his friend's involvement in the S-4 program after a while of his friend's involvement in the project. Lazar wants the world to understand that he did not spew the government's secret out of spite. On the contrary, he was doing it because he felt it should not be kept this much of a secret. Some parts of the process, rightfully, should be kept away from the public eye. But shrouding the whole process in secrecy was unwise. Since the question of whether or not humans were alone had plagued civilization for a while, and had potentially been answered, there was more reason to reveal what was hidden. Fueled by outrage concerning the government's excessive secrecy, Lazar had taken Huff and a couple of others to the military base to show them what was happening. For two consecutive weeks, this band of five had managed to sidestep security to behold the testing of these spacecraft for themselves. They had witnessed the strange crafts soar over the mountains. Huff had his account of one of the sightings. He vividly described the incident. He said the craft he had witnessed had come up above the mountain he had been hiding out. It hovered around for a bit before plummeting to the ground quite dramatically, after which the craft merely floated about and cruised leisurely before resuming its ascent of the mountain. Twice, Lazar's stories were corroborated by other eyewitness accounts of strange sightings, which sounded quite similar to everything Lazar had given an account of. We cannot in good faith ignore stories that eyewitnesses have corroborated. There is most likely an element of truth within, even if we do not want to admit it. Huff, too, had granted a second interview concerning some of the sightings he had seen. He mentioned that this time, they had viewed the sightings through the lens of a telescope. He describes the aircraft he had seen as being elliptical. They had also concluded that the craft was light in weight, judging from the speed at which it had flown past them. It had gradually glowed stronger and brighter they feared it would explode at some point. However, the hardy floating object didn't explode. The craft had just floated around and glowed, and at some point had come dangerously close to where they had been. But Lazar and his friend had taken shelter behind a car they had been hiding in to watch the scenes unfold. The craft then moved down, shining a bit, and very quietly drifted back towards the mountains from where it had come, hovered for a while, and touched down in the same fashion you see it done in the movies. Lazar is not the only one who has come out to claim first-hand knowledge about these spacecraft at the test site. He, however, is the only one who has been quite vocal about his knowledge of them to the public. A technician in a highly sensitive position had mentioned that it was common knowledge to those with high security clearances that recovered alien disks are stored in the Nevada test facility. And a Las Vegas professional who served as military personnel posted at Area 51 claimed to have seen a flying disk land around the test site. He mentioned that after he had witnessed this occurrence, he was immediately surrounded by several military personnel and was carted away and debriefed for several hours non-stop. Another technician who used to work at Groom Lake had filed a report on how he had erringly stepped into the wrong hangar and was faced with what seemed to resemble a metallic disc hidden behind a tarp. Many individuals in lab coats had attended to this odd-shaped aircraft. Another individual, an airman who had served at Nellis at a radar post, revealed that he and a few of his fellow service members had witnessed odd things flying over the Groom Mountain over a five-night span. He also claimed that the radar photographs show other things zooming into range at over 7,000 miles per hour and then stopping on a dime. The good airmen had stated that nothing they had at the facility could move at such speeds. The airman mentioned that when rumors of the sightings had spread, he had been instructed to turn off his radar sensors for that area and not talk to anyone about it because it had never happened. While all of these may be explained by some other secret program, Instead of it being that the United States government is flying crafts obtained from extraterrestrials, Bob Lazar remains adamant that it is the advanced technology of extraterrestrials. The Navy has also been approached to investigate these claims that Lazar seems bent on spreading, 
The Navy has denied having any materials in its files. The Naval Research Laboratory stated that it did a comprehensive search, but came up with nothing to give credence to the existence of these objects. The Naval Intelligence had conferred with the research team and mentioned that it was not necessary to create a file over something that did not exist. Yet Bob Lazar was also corroborated by a polygraph test administered by Terry Tavaretti, who worked in corporate security for a big Las Vegas hotel property after spending years serving in the police force in Southern California. Terry had administered thousands of polygraph exams to the hotel personnel, specifically the casino personnel, and was regarded as one of the best in the business. 30 years later, Terry still has the test sheets and machine. Recently, Terry was asked if he believed Bob Lazar was right in his claims, and his response was a straightforward and confident yes. At the time, Lazar had agreed to a polygraph test at the prompting of Class TV, where he had given his first interview concerning these UFO sightings. The initial tests had been inconclusive. The examiner, who was not Terry Tavernetti, had thought Bob to have been too nervous that getting an accurate read from him would have been difficult. Tavernetti was then recruited to conduct the test. He had questioned Lazar about his claims of having seen a flying disc at the S-4 base and how the vehicle had been powered by an anti-meta reactor and generated its gravity. To Terry's amazement, Bob had passed the test with flying colors. Terry, who did not believe in UFOs, recalled what had been going through his head then. He mentioned that what he had been hearing was unbelievable, but again, his polygraph machines did not lie. Two strange things occurred after the exam, further cementing the possibility of these claims in Terry's mind. The first was that he had been called before his employers, who had told him that unknown federal agents had called them to question why their employee was getting involved in something he had no business getting involved in. The second event occurred roughly two months after the first. Terry's house was burgled, leading him to believe that whoever had done that had attempted to steal Bob Lazar's polygraph test. Perhaps he was telling the truth after all. There have been many more sightings of these UFOs, proof of individual sightings, people coming across strange floating objects, or worse, humanoid creatures. Whether or not you believe all of these, all proof tilts towards the possibility of humans not being alone, and a relationship between our species and these extraterrestrials have been going on in secret for the longest time. What do you think about Bob Lazar's claims? Do you believe that humans are indeed not alone in the universe? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.